so we just finished the first quarter of the season and the Texans are 2-2 two two right now. And when I made my season predictions, I had the Texans at 2-2 two two at this point. But with wins versus the Jaguars and the Titans. As you guys know, we lost the Jaguars week 1, but then ended up beating the Bengals in week 2. I didn't think the Bengals were going to be that bad of a team, and I didn't know the team was going to come out flat how they did week 1. So, so far, it's been a pretty interesting season. I mean, it started off with the, you know, the whole hurricane stuff, and then the week one game against the Jaguars which I do think was a complete fluke the offensive line got destroyed that game Tom Savage couldn't get anything going they put in Watson he couldn't really get much going either and then boom week two Watson's a starter which really you know hyped up some people and caught some other people by surprise because all offseason O'Brien was saying Savage was going to be the starter so the fact that he switched to Watson that quick was really surprising. So, there's that. And then week two, we played the Bengals. And you guys know how that game went. A complete slugfest, defensive battle. And at this point, I and pretty much probably every other Texas fan thought it was going to be more of the same. The same from 2015. The same team from 2016. That good defensive team that wins sluggish games with a terrible offense holding them back but then we go up to New England week three and Deshaun Watson goes blow for blow with Tom Brady and that caught a lot of people by surprise because we were like 13 points under underdogs in that game and Watson came through but that game was you know an indicator that our defense wasn't the same, the secondary in particular. It probably hurt that Kevin Johnson was lost for a while against the Bengals, but nonetheless, our secondary was exposed. Our team wasn't, our defense wasn't that good. And then against the Titans the following week, Deshaun Watson explodes and the team puts up 57 points up against the Titans and you know the Titans were favorites to win a division I don't know why but they were and the Texans just flat out embarrassed them so it's been a really interesting season so far and throughout these four weeks I still don't know how to feel about the Texans like I don't know how to feel about the defense the defense usually doesn't get going to like around week seven week six week eight around there so, you know usually like the latter part of the season so part of me wants to, you know, let that slide, but part of me is also worried that our defense fucking sucks now for some reason. And then there's the offense, and part of me is also worried that once teams get more game film on Deshaun Watson, that he's not going to be as effective. Of course, we got the offensive line to still worry about, but, you know, I'll give the offensive line this. It's been steadily improving after allowing 10 sacks. Week one versus the Jaguars, I think it allowed three versus the. No, what's it called? The Bengals, and then it allowed one against the. Pats and then zero against the Titans. So, well, one if you you know the Savage one. Late in the game, which really didn't count. So. Yeah, the offensive line has been improving. The running game is leaky at times I I don't think it's quite where we need it to be where we want it to be most of it is due to to Sean Watson scrambling and stuff the wide receiver play is now Hopkins is back he finally got himself a quarterback so he's performing at a high level again so that's good Wolf Fuller's first game back versus the Titans man he looked good a lot of people had you know issues with his hands and it looks like he's worked on that. And, of course, we got Bruce Ellington, who a lot of people have overlooked in the you know national media. Because us as Texans fans, we know what 
Braxton, not Braxton, Miller, fucking Bruce Ennington can bring. And Braxton Miller, Braxton Miller, still don't like him. Hopefully he can get things turned around though. Not much else to say there about the wide receiver. Tight ends, Ryan Griffin has been pretty solid for us. That CJ, not that CJ Federer, which has been out for a while. And will probably be out until the Seattle game, so. Yeah. Defensive line, or defensive front, has been surprisingly inconsistent. Like, when this defensive line, you know, this defensive front, when you think about J.J. Watt, Javion Clowney, Whitney Merciless, you think about fucking game wreckers wrecking offenses, but that has not been the case. I don't know what is going on. The defensive front hasn't been as good as advertised. I don't know why that's the case. And you got the linebackers, you know, Cushing suspension. Sat Cunningham, Dylan Cole have done a great job filling in. Should probably start over Cushing, honestly, because they bring something Cushing doesn't or Bernard McKinney doesn't. And that's speed, and that's something we need, because if Clowney or Merciless were to fuck up on setting the edge, those guys can clean it up real easily, and that's something Brian Cushing or Bernard McKinney can't really do. And then, of course, our corners, Jonathan Joseph, still a solid guy. Kareem Jackson, still a great tackler, but now he's playing on the outside, which he is, you know, pretty bad at times. He should be playing in the slot where he's one of the top slot corners in the NFL. So, that's mostly due because Kevin Johnson's hurt. Once Kevin Johnson comes back, I expect the secondary to be slightly better. The safeties are pretty questionable, even though Gilchrist has been playing pretty decent as of late. He He's probably the best safety we have right now. Andre Howe, yes, he did have two interceptions versus the Titans, but he's not really all that great. Special teams, of course, you already guys know, our coverage unit is terrible, always has been, and probably always will be because Texans, and of course, we got um, Shane Leckler still being our punter, Hall of Fame punter, not much else to say there, we signed uh, her, we kept Fairbairn instead of Novak, which which to me was a questionable move at first, but now it's looking like a genius move because, you know, I already knew the guy had a strong-ass leg and can kick it, you know, past the end zone on kickoffs. And that's something we obviously need. And, of course, my issue with him being our kicker was that he wasn't that accurate on kicks. And so far, I think he's made nine field goals and... All his PATs except for one, which didn't really matter because it was against the Titans. And, you know, you guys know how that game went. Score would have been 58 to 14 had he made it. So, would have been a little bit worse, but whatever. But, you know, now something I really want to talk about is the coaching, man. Is the Texans defense struggling because of Mike Vrabel and his inexperience? I actually think that is 100% the problem because our defensive line, our defensive front should be dominating teams. Tom Brady should not have put up, what, 36 points on us. Our, even if our secondary is leaky, I mean, our front seven should have murdered Tom Brady, sacked him eight times because of that terrible offensive line. Same thing with the Jaguars. We're with our defensive front against the Jaguars. And yes, I understand the Titans do have a good offensive line, but I mean, you got J.J. Wadja, Davion Clowney, Whitney Merciless, D.J. Reader. You should be getting, averaging four sacks a game at the bare minimum. I, I, I don't know what's going on. This front seven should be making up for the lackluster secondary that we're dealing with right now. I don't know what is going on. I don't know if it's just the typical Texans early season defensive struggles or if it's actually Mike Rabel, and my bet is that it's Mike Rabel because he's not inexperienced coach we just kind of threw him out there you know he was a good linebacker coach and you know we, they just threw him out there I don't know why people want him as head coach I mean all he did was develop Clowney and Merciless I think he needed more experience man us I, I mean Romeo Cornell is still the assistant head coach so if things keep going this way I say demote Vrabel bring back Cornell as defensive coordinator because with Watson man you, you don't know what's possible I mean if our defense is dominant 
we could be three and one right now. Actually, if our defense has been would have really been as dominant as advertised in the off season, we would be four and zero right now. Cause I'm pretty sure our defensive front, talent wise, would have been able to suffocate Blake Bortles and force him into some stupid mistakes. But no, I don't know what's going on here. And another thing, the offense, man. O'Brien has been doing a good job calling the plays. He's catering the offense to Deshaun Watson to his strengths, and that's good, man. That's something a lot of fans have been saying O'Brien should do instead of trying to fit these quarterbacks to work our scheme. Why not get our scheme and let the quarterbacks cater the scheme to the quarterbacks, is what I'm trying to say. So, that's finally good. The offense is looking more creative. And it's only going to get better as time goes on because the game is still yet to slow down for Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is still a rookie. He still hasn't gotten that chemistry perfect with DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller and the other receivers, especially Bruce Ellington, who came in a little late. So, let's see where things go from here. And, of course, you still got... Deontay Foreman who I think is going to turn out to be a good player for us and he's still also a rookie so as the season goes on Watson and Foreman will improve only making the offense better and rumor has that Dwayne Brown's going to come back before the bye week because he kind of has to or else he's here till 2019 and that's something he doesn't want so let's see I mean, personally trade Dwayne Brown fuck him but if he comes back that is a help and you can't Ignore that fact that he is a help to the team if he does come back. So, 2-2 two and two is not bad where we're at right now. I think it's perfect. We can, we're going to win a division. I mean, there's not much else to say. So, with that being said, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.